Okay, we are back. Episode number two in one day. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Drew here from uh, thatanxietyguy.com. As with with me, as always, Billy from Anxiety United in the UK. Hello. What's up, Bill? So uh, we're going to do uh, – we're doing two in one day here. For those of you who are noticing Billy's Yankee hat, New York Yankee hat, <laughs> still, still on. Not a week later. We're doing two in a row. Um, we are doing the next in our little Anxiety 101 series. Uh, this is based on an article that I wrote many moons ago that I'll link in the video description or wherever you happen to be watching this. Go read along with us. And we're just taking each segment of the article as we go and kind of tearing it apart, spending 15 to 30 minutes, you know, kind of talking about each concept. And today we're going to talk about the idea that there is really no comfortable way to effectively mm-hmm. get out of this anxiety and panic situation. There's going to be some discomfort involved. It's, it's a sticking point for many people. Would you agree? I would. I think you said it best on a video whenever it was a long time ago when you said that if you just sit and do nothing, it's not like a normal like if you have the flu, you can sit, your body will adapt, it'll rid the virus and you will recover. But right. with this, if you sit and do nothing, it's you worse. will get nothing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and many times you'll make things worse. Mm. Yes, I, I have said there there is no immune response to anxiety. Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah. So th- let's start with that. That's really good. So there's no comfortable way. Let's say you, you do get the flu. You get sick. You get a stomach bug or something. The normal thing that we would do in those situations is we retreat. Maybe you'll, mm-hmm. call, you'll call into work and not go in or you stay from school or whatever it is. You'll, you'll retreat into your own, you know, your home. You're going to stay on the sofa or whatever. You're going to rest. Yeah, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to rest. I'm going to lay on the sofa and watch TV or sleep or whatever it is. And you're going to kind of recover because your body automatically, maybe you're taking a little medicine, but whatever. There's an immune response. Your body will get you past that. And then you're back in yeah. the game, right? But retreat and rest is absolutely the wrong way to deal with this. Mm-hmm. The wrong mm-hmm. way to deal with this. That's what would seem the comfortable way. And I think that kind of segues us into this. That would seem the comfortable yeah, yeah. way. So if I'm afraid to be in the shopping mall or in my car, it's a whole lot more comfortable just to say, I just, I just need to rest. You know, I need, I need yeah, to be, yeah. I, and I hear, I hear words like, uh, let's just start ruffling. You know what? Let's just start ruffling feathers right from the get go in this one. Go on. So go let's on. go, let's go with it. Bring it. So, you know, I'm from New York. You got a Yankee hat on. We're going to ruffle some feathers. So, mm. um, yeah. <laughs> so I hear this all the time. I hear be kind to yourself. Now that's not bad. Mm-hmm. That's not bad advice. We should always treat ourselves with respect, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Be kind to ourselves. Take it easy. T- you know, take it slow, rest. Yeah, yeah. And the worst one, it's okay. It's mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not effing okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, and we have to accept that. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll throw this at you. You can ruffle some feathers on this too. But when I see those. Oh, things, you're doing a good job here, man. Right? Hey, come on. Job. You got to get in there with me. I'm not going to be the only <laughs> one with hate mail. Um, when I see those statements online, it kind of freaks me out a little bit. And I want to yell into the screen sometimes, like, no, it's not okay. And, mm. and, and let's not misinterpret treat yourself kindly or treat yourself well. Like the misinterpretation of that as it's okay that you can't drive. Just hang out at home until you can. Yeah, yeah. It could not be more incorrect. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I think you'd probably agree that the reason why we fall into that trap is that just hang out at home until you're able to drive is the most comfortable thing to do. The, the longer that you leave it between attempting to do something, the more difficult it gets. Hundred percent. If I, I mean, yep. if I've spent a week at home, maybe I've got a bit of extra work on. I work from home, so if I don't leave the house for a week, even if it's just to nip to the shop or whatever it is, the next time that I do, there's definitely anxiety. There's definitely more apprehension before I even leave the house. Yeah. Not necessarily. It's not necessarily harder once I'm out, but it's that building up that courage again. You feel like you've got to just start generating the courage that you that you had to display that first time that you ever did it. Whereas yes. at the moment, I'm going out of the house every day at the moment, like numerous times to go and see my dad. And I'm not even thinking about like leaving the house. It's not even a, a question. It's just a case of I've now got to go and right. I go and do it. I come back. And even if I feel like junk while I'm out, it's not going to stop me from doing it. It's just like I'm in the, the routine, I guess. It's building positive memories, isn't it? Right, it is. And so there are times when you are out dealing you know, with your dad's situation and mm. now it's becoming easy and easy to get out the door, obviously. It's just a, it's a normal yeah, yeah. thing for you to do now. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, even when you're out, at times you may feel uncomfortable, right? Like mm-hmm. you said, you feel like crap when you're out. And, mm. and the natural – let me look at what I, what I wrote here. You know what? 
it's human instinct. We, we are creatures of comfort and safety. So we're, yeah. we always want to go to a place of comfort and safety and a lower energy level. And we're trying to find that tranquility all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Some may argue that there are people among us, I might be one of them, that thrive on chaos a little bit, like I do well yeah, in that yeah. situation. But mm-hmm. generally speaking, we're going we're gonna to seek quiet and comfort and safety. So it's normal to do that. But in this situation, like Billy just illustrated, the longer you seek the comfortable route, the mm-hmm. harder it becomes to actually get on a real route, route, route mm-hmm. that will mm-hmm. lead to some progress. And let's talk about some of the ways that we know people try and find comfortable ways to do it. You know, we were talking a little bit before we went on the air here. You know? yeah. And I wrote, don't waste your time or money on books, CDs, DVDs, or websites that, came to have, that claim to have a cure for panic attacks, unless you're willing to face your fear head on as part of the process. I think the first time that I ever saw cognitive behavior therapy, I went there with the mindset that I'm going to go here for eight weeks the therapist is going to teach me or he's going to do something. He's going to tell me something that's just going to switch it all off. And that was the mindset that I had. And at the end of the eight weeks, I learned nothing. And I just went home and just continued on the path of anxiety because I'd just gone in there expecting whatever somebody else was going to fix this for me. Uh, that was, that was the easy way. Yeah. But, and, and that it would somehow be like, well, the doctor will fix this. The therapist is yeah, going yeah. to fix it. Yeah, that Otherwise, what's the point of me going to see someone if right. I've got to do the hard work? That's a good but aside. That's, it's, it, that's, it, the, that's yeah. the reality. Yeah, and, and, and the, I, that's the third time that I went, The third time that I went, I knew a bit more about everything. And I did use some of the stuff, but it still didn't do a lot for me. But I noticed that, obviously, I've got to do the hard work. Yeah. And that's the pitfall of many, many people, I think. Maybe sometimes you'll you'll go on a path and you'll start making progress, but then it gets a bit hard because obviously your tolerance gets a bit more. You can do more, do more, but there does come a point where it feels like I'm happy now. Yeah. I can walk. I can walk 300 yards. I can go to the shop, get my tea bags. That'll do, you know. And then people switch off, and I've done that. I'm a victim of that many a time where I've reached that comfortable level right. and just thought, okay, this will do will stay here. But it doesn't take long to slip back if you don't carry on. I think that's true for people like us. The, the comfortable, whenever you're happy being comfortable, we run the risk of sliding backwards to a certain yeah, extent, yeah. like you said. So mm. yes, you've conquered this, but you know, I can get to the local shop, I can drive my kids to school, whatever it happens to be, mm. you know, mm. I'm, I'm good now. And then when you, mm. when you start to rest and stop pushing, you know, as far as you can, yeah. I it, think you made, you made a point in a video a few videos back where he said if you include the the bit i can do anything if or as long as yeah. remember when you said that yeah yeah so if you're still using that at the end then you're not any further forward than you were initially really okay the yeah. fear is still there that's true i can do right i can do anything as long as i have yeah. so and so in the car with me or uh, yeah yeah exactly I have my mints or my, my pills or whatever mm. it is. that's you true. may as well you may as well just not do anything if you ain't going to do everything. So I think the, the key concept that we're just going <laughs> to hammer this again and again yeah. and again is like, you know, me ruffling feathers. Yeah, it's okay. I don't, but it's, I don't, it's I don't, totally fine. I'm not, I'm not somebody that does everything. So I'm beating myself with the same stick. But in, in the end, like I can do anything so long as like, I'm fine. Yeah, so yeah. long as, you know, I hear this all the time. You know, like uh, women will say like, I'm fine as long as I have my boyfriend or my husband with me. Mm-hmm. Or, or men, mm-hmm. too, as long as I have my wife with me or whoever, you know. Um, the reason why you want that person or whatever the safety device is, mints, water, coloring book, your phone, whatever mm-hmm. it happens to be, that that's your crutch, it makes you feel comfortable. Like, that's mm-hmm. safety. Like, well, my phone will save me. I can call somebody. And, and you're trying to find a way to get away from being uncomfortable. And in the end, mm-hmm. so the same thing with your first experience with cognitive behavior therapy. If you go in and say, okay, here's the deal. This is going to be hard work, and I am going to be freaking uncomfortable a lot while I do this. Yeah. You know, the outcome is usually way better because when I hear people say that therapy doesn't work, it, that doesn't work. It doesn't work for me. Well, it usually mm. doesn't work because of the expectation of comfort and safety. Like, well, this will be easy, and and I don't, I won't have to do any hard work. So, if mm-hmm. you're really serious about moving forward in this, the first things that you're going to have to deal with is the idea that I'm going to be afraid and uncomfortable on purpose. And I'm going to mm-hmm. work hard. I'm go- this is an active process that requires hard work, 
persistence and tenacity every single day and, and the willingness to intentionally make yourself uncomfortable. And the go on. No, and you know what? And if and if you can't fully embrace that right now, I, I truly think that progress can be made, but it's a tenuous progress. It's it's yeah, one yeah. that it's one that can can disintegrate on you quickly because you're really not addressing the key thing, which is like bring it bring the fear, bring the discomfort. There's nothing behind it. It's completely toothless. There's no real basis for any of this fear. And I'm mm -hmm. going to put myself right in the middle of it intentionally so that I learn that through experience. And if, if we're not willing to do that, we're just sort of tilting at windmills in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the second time I ever had cognitive behavior therapy, cause I've had it three times via the NHS. And the second time I think we'd done like three sessions in the building, just sitting talking. Yeah. And then the next the next time that I went, I had a a new therapist just for one session, and she took me out of the building, and it was in like the town, and we she wanted me to walk, so we did this walking, and I was freaking out, and it was horrible, and sure. But we saw we walked like maybe a hundred yards, and then we stopped, and she said, right, I I want this to become your safe place now. So we were sort of making me the safe place. Yeah. And then we'd, we'd expand a bit further. And then I didn't go again because I freaked out so much. So that was me. You know, I wasn't willing to be uncomfortable. uncomfortable. Right. You want but to avoid the, it. Yeah. The, but the progress that I made on that one session, I did feel so much better. Yeah. And it made, it made me think like, this is definitely the way. But I, and then when it came around to next week, it was like, I ain't doing that again. And, we, and that's where that's where the bravery and the courage comes in. You've got to be willing to take those hits, haven't you? You do have to be willing to take those hits. But I think you would probably agree that the hit becomes easier to take every single time you do it. It does. It's just believing in yourself. Right. Even mm. though even though the, the decrease in, dis, in discomfort might be small each time. Mm. But every single time you confront that thing. So pick something that makes you uncomfortable today. If you're watching us right now, pick one thing that makes you really yeah, uncomfortable. Yeah. I don't care if it's just opening the front door and standing on the front step of your house. If mm. that's what makes you uncomfortable, then resign yourself today to actually do that. Even just yeah, for yeah. 30 seconds. You know, and it will be easier the second time you do it. Get yourself together mm -hmm. any way you can. I don't care. And then do it again an hour later. And then do it again and again and again until your neighbors think you are batshit crazy because you keep going out and standing <laughs> on the front step. Who cares? But the point is, make put yourself in an uncomfortable situation. Understand it's going to suck. You're going to be afraid. You're going to be uncomfortable. Expect all of those things to happen. Use your mm -hmm. coping skills the best way you can. Ignore your symptoms. Let's tie all the previous episodes together. And as you go, every single time you do that, you will be less uncomfortable. Yeah, but, yeah. But if you're not willing to start being uncomfortable and afraid, then you got a long road to go. And that, what I was saying before, I don't know if people are thinking, but I was saying, if you if you can't do anything, or if you can't do everything, don't do anything. I didn't mean that. What I'm saying is, if you're still struggling to do something, then still work at doing whatever it is. Yeah. Till you're completely free of it. So yes, the small steps are. Necess necessity Absolutely. necessary they are, they oh are necessary God. and you know what and, and do them but if there comes a point where as i was saying yeah. if you get to something i can do this as long as then we need to work on that as well so let's keep going don't get to a point that's what i'm saying don't get to your shop and think that you've won yes keep going keep well, going know, and, and i i would say that's true you know when you get to the shop and you haven't been able to get there for a year yeah, yeah. You've won in that moment. And and yes, yeah, yeah. give a fist pump and be proud yeah, of definitely. yourself and celebrate. But then 100%. understand that it only matters if you go home and then come back again two hours later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, you know, go to the next shop from there. Mm. So each, no one victory in this war, no one battle that you win wins the war. Mm. They mm. all add up. Yeah, keep going, keep going. Keep going, right. So... When you get to the point where you feel that you are now comfortable, that's usually a hint that says, mm, there's something else I haven't tackled yet. Mm -hmm. And I will even say for me, and, and I am now years down the road from being in the worst place that I've ever been. And to the point where now, you know, I'm flying all over the place and I'm traveling on business. And, and you know, I, I feel like I have gotten to the point where, yeah, sure, I can do anything. Then there's mm -hmm. no as long as. Yeah, yeah. But even so, it's super easy. And I will tell you this. I did experience some very high anxiety two days ago. I had mm -hmm. like it, it was some of the roughest panic that I have encountered in probably 15 years. 
And even for somebody like me who has come all the way down this road and is like bold enough to think I have something to offer by making videos like this, even mm -hmm. in my situation, yesterday was a struggle. Yesterday was uncomfortable because the old habits and the old responses mm -hmm. are still there. So yeah, yeah. yesterday, even for me, I, I, not that I'm anything special, but people say all the time, well, you must be cured. But even for me, you all think that I'm cured and I'm, I'm like better. Mm -hmm. I intentionally had to be very uncomfortable most of yesterday to make sure mm -hmm. that, that that event did not represent a slide backwards for me. Yeah. So sadly for people like us, it may almost never be over. But I will mm -hmm. tell you this, I don't even think about it anymore. Yesterday was yeah, tough. Yeah. I'm all good today. So there was no comfortable way. There was no comfortable way. Like I really just wanted to like not leave my house yesterday. I really yeah, wanted yeah. to do that, but mm. I, I made myself be very uncomfortable all day long yesterday. And by the end of the mm. day, it was, it was good again. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, what am I saying here? So in the end, <laughs> I, don't know. I can't say the word necessary for some reason. We're all good. I can't say, <sighs> I can't say numbness. We were talking yeah. about that. So in the end, when you accept that there's no comfortable way and you are willing to go down that road, what you are learning to do is not be afraid of your anxiety, your panic, your symptoms, your own body and mind anymore. And when you get to that point, and this is the biggest thing you have to do, that, that courage and accepting that you're going to be uncomfortable, when you are no longer afraid of having a panic attack, you win. The war mm -hmm. is over. You'll still mm -hmm. have to mop up now and then, but that's where we're getting at. All of yeah. the blabbling that we're doing on YouTube and in my podcast and what you're doing, it all gets to that point. When you get, when you get to the point where right now you are not afraid of having the worst possible panic attack mm -hmm. you can think of, mm -hmm. who cares? It's like stubbing your toe. You win the war. And so yeah. let's start here with accepting that we're going to be uncomfortable on the way to get there. But the reward is freaking enormous. It's crazy because you don't really think of it like that when you're in the midst of it. Like right. you're worried about the symptoms, you're worried about going to the supermarket, you're worried about parents' evenings at school and stuff like that. But when it all boils down to it, that is exactly what it is. You're scared of having right. that panic attack. And that's the whole thing. That's what it all is about. The disorder is is the modification of your lifestyle because you're afraid of how you might feel yeah, or yeah. what you might think. And when, yeah, you, yeah. when you aren't afraid of how you're going to feel anymore. The annoying, the annoying thing is it's oh, not even how you will. It's how you might. might. And that's, that's what. That's exactly ooh. right. So, you know, you mm -hmm. have to get to the point where you say, well, you know what? I'm going to my daughter's dance recital today. And I may mm -hmm. have like a massive panic attack while I'm sitting there, but I don't care. It isn't going to mm -hmm. matter to me. If I do, I, I do. This. If I don't, I don't. I love this, right? I <laughs> love feeling like this. Yeah. So, you know, in a way, and the first time that you fully embrace that and you do that and you feel like a freaking superhero. So I, mm -hmm. I know I, I feel like I'm all riled up on this topic, but it's a real thing. It's a real thing. Mm -hmm. I've and, been and, there. And a pox. I've been through it. <laughs> we were talking about this before we went live. You know, a pox on anybody who's out there trying to take money from people to, to cure their panic in an easy way. Because mm -hmm. it doesn't exist. In, in the end. You can't read a book and be okay. No, no. You can read a book and get a lot of good advice. Oh, yeah, 100%. I've picked up things that I use. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. But, but nobody's going to fix it but you in the end. So if you're looking for help and you're going to spend your money on, on a website or a program or whatever, I actually wrote CDs and DVDs. How old is this article? But if, if you're going to spend money on books, audio books or programs or whatever, if, if they aren't giving you work to do, you know, and, and it doesn't involve facing yeah, your yeah. fear. If, if that mm. program doesn't make you a little uncomfortable just reading about it, then it's not a good program. Mm. It's not a good program. And Save your money and spend it on days out when you're feeling better. That's exactly right. That's a really good idea. Yeah. Save it for putting, you know, gas in your car so you can drive yourself around. Mm. Um, mm. And in the end, what I'd probably say, because I talk about her all the time. I'm, you know, at some point I'll finish my series with, with Holly on the Claire Week stuff. Yeah, yeah. Really and truly go get yourself anything that that woman ever wrote or said because mm -hmm. she's just going to lay it out there. It's flat out like, you know what? Your legs are shaking, but they're perfectly good. Now get out there and walk. And in the yeah. end, that is what she's, she's advocating. Yeah. And anybody else that has come after her, you know, me included, we're just rehashing her stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But anybody that gives you a magic bullet, hey, my panic magically went away in two days, yes. you know, just run, save your money. Guaranteed or your money back. Yeah. So um, 
this one isn't going to be a half hour marathon. I guess I've, <laughs> I've, it's 20 minutes of me ranting. So I appreciate you guys hanging in there That's with me good. on that. So I'm going to wrap this one up, I think, by the way I ended that paragraph. And I say this one all the time. And I, and I try and live this way, too, is and I even put it in italics like go Drew. Um, you, you have to be afraid before you cannot be afraid. Yeah. And sorry, that's just the way it's going to have to be. I would agree with that. If you're going to do it, if it's going to work, that's it. Yeah. It's the only way. Yeah. And so that's that's the no comfortable way. You're going to have to mm. you're going to have to buy into that to go further. And uh, sorry, can't get you around it. This is it. But you know what? Or you can yeah. Or you can be comfortable ish. Ish. Yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Because if you're honest, nobody's comfortable with sitting at home anyway. No. No. You know. Right. Either way. You're still. Yeah, we still get these uncomfortable feelings and sensations, and so why not? Or do you want another good way to, to pick? I think to, and I never thought about this this way before, but you can either choose to be really like extremely uncomfortable for forty minutes, or you can just be generally uneasy and unhappy and uncomfortable for the rest of your life. Which one is it? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, exactly. you can sit in your house if you want, but you might get uncomfortable there anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, even the house, I've known people who have gotten to the point where it's just the sofa is the only safe place. Even the kitchen yeah, yeah. is panic inducing. Mm-hmm. So that mm-hmm. can happen. But more than that, when you're sitting in your house and you didn't go to the supermarket and you can't pick up your kids from school and you can't go to work, how uncomfortable is that? So ask yourself yeah, that. Yeah. It's a different kind of uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. So well, that's it. The only way to create positive memories is to create positive memories right exactly you can't just wish it we have to get out and do the work Mm. and to me it's just my own personal feeling and it's really work for me i would rather spend three months being afraid and uncomfortable and working hard and kicking my own ass and then Mm. having a great life than not doing that avoiding that and just two years down the road still saying like oh my god you know when is this ever gonna Mm -hmm. be better well it's not Mm. because i chose Mm. to not do the work so those of you who hate me and Billy now, or maybe just me, I don't know. I apologize, but uh, um, I think it needs to be said. It's very rarely said. And you know what? I will say oh, this also. If you're online and you're interacting with other people on Twitter or in forums or on websites, whatever it happens to be, take this philosophy of there's no comfortable way, understanding that you have to be afraid, you have to be willing to be uncomfortable, and how about like cheering each other on? So mm. th- I started by ruffling feathers by saying it's not okay. So the next time somebody posts in your favorite forum – that they skipped their daughter's dance recital or their son's Little League baseball game or whatever it is, and they're feeling horribly, do not respond with, it's okay. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I, mm-hmm. would, I would strongly suggest responding with like, okay, let's, what are we, we going to learn from this and how can we mm-hmm. fix it? Mm-hmm. Like yeah, root, yeah. root each other on, be cheerleaders, be supportive, be encouraging, set examples, follow leads. If I didn't watch you walk to the freaking post box, you know, 10 years, however long ago that was, almost 10 years yeah, now, yeah. you know, mm. maybe I'm not standing here now. So mm. you could not have asked for a better example of, of encouragement and, yeah, yeah, exactly. and like rooting each other on and not mm. settling for like, that's eh, okay, dude, you know, just sit inside for the next week. It's okay. Like no one mm. ever said that in that little group. Mm. So mm. there you go. Rant over. <laughs> here, here endeth the lesson. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> um, yeah. As usual, you can. No, I feel, us, I feel that yeah. this would be the most helpful podcast yet. It's or t- video. It's tough love. What can I say? But, truth uh, hurts. Truth, the truth hurts sometimes. But I need to watch it back myself. Like I don't know whether people realize that I'm in the freaking boat with them. <laughs> you know, That's true. I need to get out there. That's true. But still, you know, I'm so restricted in the way that I live. I need to take my own advice, listen to your freaking advice, and. And get out of there. And that's, that's uncomfortable, I would say. The mm. way you're living mm. right now might be physically comfortable when you're sitting there at your desk, but is it uncomfortable? Yeah, yeah. There's got to be a level of discomfort with feeling restricted. No. Oh, I can do anything as long as. All right. There you go. Well, I think you're doing great the last, you know, you've had to deal with some yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm, you're I'm just rolling with progress. it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. I love it. Yeah. So, um, okay. We're going to wrap this one up because now we're at 25 minutes, so it is going to be a half hour rant. Anxietynight.com. <laughs> Yes, anxietyunited.com or on YouTube. Just there'll be links everywhere. If you have questions for me. We'll just say, yeah. if you click the subscribe button, watch the freaking videos, man. I've ah, got... very good. I never do that. I know we're supposed to say that. Please like the videos and subscribe. I never say that. Yeah. No, I'd rather people didn't subscribe. Just watch the bloody videos. Right. I get more more subscribers than views. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> That's true. That's a good Please, point. Watch it twice. Watch this one twice. 
And, if, you. you know, if there are comments and questions, throw them at us. Uh, you're going to find me at thatanxietyguy.com or youtube.com slash thatanxietyguy. That is that anxiety guy, all one word. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, that's my website. So if you have questions or comments, you know, bring them. We're getting great comments in a lot of times. I've been a little lax the last yes. two weeks in getting back to them, but I try and answer all of them. I know Billy does too. And, I've been uh, busy, but yeah, I do try. Yeah, yeah. So, and it'll help because I think in the end, I know we've said this a few times, when we get through this article, we'll probably do like a Q&A at least one yep. or two Q&A I think so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be good. So next time we're going to talk about finding the root of the problem, which is helpful. But uh, we'll talk about the difference between like laying on a sofa and talking about how your mom didn't hug you enough. And, and you know, which is fine. We all need hugs. But uh, finding the root of the problem, we're going to talk about that next time and how that fits into our general strategy. It's been good. We're good? Oh, yeah. All right, folks. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one. Ta-da. Ta-da.